Hello, Duke. Well, Mike, any luck today? Well, I figured out a swell racket and everything was going great until the cops came along. Too bad it didn't work. If them cops would stick to their own racket and leave honest guys alone, we'd get somewhere in this country without a lot of this relief and all that stuff. Hmm. Well, Mike, I wouldn't worry. Prosperity's just around the corner. Yeah, it's been there a long time. I wish I knew which corner. Hmm. Well, Duke, I'm gonna turn in. Bonsoir. Bonsoir, Mike. This is the place, all right. That looks like one of them sitting outside that looks shack. Looks like a pretty tough joint to me. You stole Irene. I'll talk to the fellow. I don't think it's fair of you and Cornelia. I told you about this place. We got here first. Well, she's not going to get ahead of me. Good evening. Good evening. How'd you like to make five dollars? Uh, I didn't quite catch what you said. I said, how'd you like to make five dollars? Five dollars? Five dollars. <laughs> I don't want to seem inquisitive, but what would I have to do for it? Oh, all you have to do is go to the Waldorf Ritz Hotel with me, and I'll show you to a few people, and then I'll send you right back. May I inquire just why you would want to show me to people at the Waldorf Ritz? Oh, if you must know, it's a game. You've probably heard about it, a scavenger hunt. If I find a forgotten man first, I win. Is that clear? Yes, quite clear. Shall I wear my tails or come just as I am? You needn't be fresh. Do you want the five dollars, or don't you? Madam, I can't tell you how flattered I am by your very generous offer. George! However, I'm afraid I'll have to take it up with my board of directors. Don't you touch me! No matter what my board of directors advise, I think you should be spanked. George, do something! Are you in the habit of hitting ladies? Maybe. I'm in the habit of hitting gentlemen also, if that'll interest you. Well, aren't you going to do anything? Yes, let's get a policeman. Who are you? I'm Irene. That was my sister Cornelia who pushed in the ice pile. Well, how'd you like to have me push Cornelia's sister into an ice pile? Oh, I don't think I'd like it. Well, then you better get out of here. Oh, you bet. Wait a minute. Sit down. I'm sitting. What's up, Duke? Need some help? No, thanks, boys. Got everything under control. You a member of this hunting party? I was, but I'm not now. Are they all forgotten men, too? Yes, I guess they are. Maybe why? That's the funniest thing. I couldn't help but laugh. I've wanted to do that ever since I was six years old. You wanted to do what? Oh, push Cornelia in something, a pile of ashes or something. You know, that was faithful George Wither. That isn't really his name, but we call him that because he gets in everybody's hair. His father's a broker. That's very enlightening. <laughs> Cornelia thought she was going to win, and you pushed her in a pile of ashes. <laughs> you think you could follow an intelligent conversation for just a moment? I'll try. Well, that's fine. Do you mind telling me just what a scavenger hunt is? Well, a scavenger hunt is exactly like a treasure hunt. Except in a treasure hunt, you try to find something you want. And in a scavenger hunt, you try to find something that nobody wants. Hmm. Like a forgotten man. That's right. And the one that wins gets a prize. Only there really isn't a prize. It's just the honor of winning, because all the money goes to charity. That is, if there's any money left over, but then there never is. Hmm. Well, that hmm. clears the whole matter up beautifully. You know, I've decided I don't want to play any more games with human beings as objects. It's kind of sordid when you think of it. I mean, when you think it over. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I haven't thought it over. Uh, yeah, I don't like to change the subject, but do you tell me why you live in a place like this when there's so many other nice places? You really want to know? Oh, I'm very curious. Mm. It's because my real estate agent felt that the altitude would be very good for my asthma. Oh, my uncle has asthma. No. Uh. Well, now there's a coincidence. Uh, well, I suppose I should be going now, shouldn't I? It's a good idea. I want to see who won the game. I suppose it was Cornelia again. She probably got another forgotten man by now. You mean if you took me along with you that you'd win the game? Is that the idea? Well, I might if I got there first, but after seeing what you did to Cornelia, I'm not saying anything. But you'd win if you got back first with me. It'd be awfully nice of you, but I don't like to ask. Let's beat Cornelia. You wouldn't be asking too much? <laughs> you see, I've got a sense of curiosity, just the same as you have. I'd really like to see just what a scavenger hunt looks like. But I told you. Yes, I'm uh, still curious. Well, uh, come on. Thank you. My name is Blake. My name is Bullock. The place slightly resembles an insane asylum. 
Well, all you need to start an asylum is an empty room and the right kind of people. That's right. Take a look at the dizzy old gal with the goat. I've had to look at her for 20 years. That's Mrs. Bullock. I'm terribly sorry. How do you think I feel? All right, all right, Angelica. Alexander, come here and look at the goat. Carl and I brought him in the Bronx. He's the sweetest little pig. Doesn't smell very sweet. Oh, Alexander never did like animals. Come on, goat, 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 come on. Are you talking to me or that thing? Oh, Alexander, come on, goat. Don't be afraid of the stairs. You and Angelica will let anything happen to you, Lord. Come on, quick, 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 quick. Come on, goat, 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 Hardly wait. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What have you there? Oh, this is Godfrey. Is Cornelia back yet? I haven't seen Cornelia. Where did you find him? Oh, Mr. Godfrey! Come on, Mr. Ladies and gentlemen, please, quiet. Quiet. Miss Bullock has a forgotten man. Uh, do you mind stepping up on the platform, please? Yes, get right up on the platform, Godfrey. Harold, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? <clears throat> Fire away. What is your address? City Dump 32, East River, Sutton Place. Hmm, it's rather fashionable over there, isn't it? In the spots. Is that your permanent address? Well, the permanency is rather questionable. You see, the place is being rapidly filled in. Do you mind if I ask you a personal question? If it isn't too personal. Are those whiskers your own? No one else has claimed them. I must ask that question because uh, one group uh, tried to fool the committee the early part of the evening by putting false whiskers on one of their own group. May I... Uh, may what? I... Uh... Your much pleasure. <clears throat> one more question. <clears throat> Are you wanted by the police? Oh, that's just the trouble. Nobody wants me. A oh, very good answer. Splendid, Godfrey. You mean nobody wants them? Nobody at all? Nobody. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, on the contrary, I sometimes find it a great advantage. The committee is satisfied. Miss Irene Bullock wins 20 points for a forgotten man and 50 points extra for bringing in the first one. Oh, bravo! <laughs> 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 Group 10 wins the silver cup. Oh, <laughs> My purpose in coming here tonight was twofold. Firstly, I wanted to aid this young lady. Secondly, I was curious to see how a bunch of empty-headed nitwits conducted themselves. My curiosity is satisfied. I assure you, it'll be a pleasure for me to go back to a society of really important people. 
I've been wanting to say that all night, but I didn't have the nerve. Oh, Godfrey. Oh, Godfrey. Oh, Godfrey, I'm terribly sorry. That's all right. I'd never brought you here if I thought they were going to humiliate you. I'm terribly grateful. This is the first time I've ever beaten Cornelia at anything, and you helped me do it. Well, that makes me a sort of Cornelia beater, doesn't it? You've done something for me. I wish I could do something for you. Why? Because you've done something for me, don't you see? No, I don't see. But I could use a job if you've got one lying around loose. Can you bottle? Bottle? Yes, we're fresh out of butlers. The one we had left this morning. Irene, they're calling for you in the jade room. Don't you want your nice cup? Tell them to keep their cup. I don't want it. But you can't stand here talking to this man. What will people think? I don't care what they think. Godfrey's going to be our butler. He's going to be whose butler? He's going to work for us. Oh, that's ridiculous. You don't know anything about him. He hasn't had any recommendations. Well, the last one had recommendations and stole all the silver. Oh, well, that was merely a coincidence. People who take in stray cats say they make the best pets, madam. I don't see what cats have got to do with butlers. She mustn't pay any attention to my daughter. She's very impulsive. I'm not impulsive. And don't shout at your mother. I will shout. Oh, Mrs. Merriweather, Irene has gone and she's shouting. Oh, you mean it's all over? Oh, yes, she always shouts when she wins. Well, run along, my good man. Just run along, and thank you so much for coming. Thank you so, so much. He will not run along. I think I'd better. My word! There's Cornelia, and she has another one! You're a little late, Cornelia. I've won the game. Oh, you have. Now, where do I get my five bucks? Box? Box? What you... Will you talk to your sister? She wants to hire this man as a butler. Why not? He might make a very good butler. I'm sure I'd make a very good butler. Hey, where do I get my five bucks? 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 What's he talking about? What's he talking about? Five bucks. Oh, I promised him five dollars. Well, well, give him the five dollars and the bucks, too, and get him out of here before your sister hires him as a chauffeur. Why did I have to wait till now to find out there's insanity on your father's side of the family? Come along, Cornelia. I hope, Godfrey, that you're very good at shining shoes. I think we'd better drop the whole idea, don't you? I should say not. You're going to make the best butler we ever had. And, uh, and here, you'll need some clothes and things, you know. Oh, well, I... Uh... Oh. <laughs> I told Jeeves to uh, lay out my other coat. <laughs> you have a wonderful sense of humor. Thank you. Well, then, good night. Mm. Oh, uh... Just one question. What? Where do you live? Oh, 1011 Fifth. It's funny, I never thought of that. <laughs> no, you didn't. 1011 Fifth. Well, good night again. Good night, Godfrey. I'm the new, uh... Yes, I know. You're the new butler. Well, how did you know? Well, there's one every day at this hour. They're dropping in and out all the time. Well, why is that? Some get fired, some quit. Is the family that exacting? No, they're that nutty. Uh, may I be frank? Is that your name? Well, my name is Godfrey. All right, be frank. You're, uh, quite an enthusiast. Don't you worry about me. I'm a seasoned campaigner. Uh, uh, may we be friends? Oh, I'm friends with all the butlers. Sit down. What's a three-letter seabird with an R in the middle? A th oh, I, I don't know. Well, you're no help. Hey, where'd you get the trick suit? What's the matter with it? Well, it might look better if you took the rental tag off the coat. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. Does the butler have quarters here in the house, or is that necessary? No, you won't need any quarters. Just hang your hat near the door so you can get it quickly on the way out. Uh, what's that? Well, that's the old battle axe. She usually rings about this time. The old battle axe? Mrs. Bullock. She's the mother type. Oh, well, don't you do anything about it? Mrs. Bullock or the buzzer? Or the buzzer. Oh, not the first time. If she has a hangover, and she usually has, she'll ring again in a minute in no uncertain terms. Then, brother, you better grab her tomato juice and get going. Ah, there she blows. 
Well, Cupid, this is your big opportunity. Shall I take it to her? You might as well know the worst. And I want to warn you, she sees pixies. Pixies? You know, the little men. Oh, those. Well, I know how to take care of those. Have you any uh, Worcestershire? Yes, that it is. Well, what are you going to do with that? Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. Well, what do you want to do, scorch your windpipe? <laughs> There's nothing like a counter-irritant in the morning. Where do I find her? You better go this way. It's quicker. The upper landing to the left. Just which is oh, that's her... her cage up there, the first door. Oh. Well, wish me luck. Happy landing. Is it Molly? I'm not Molly. Who isn't? Uh, I'm not. Stop jumping up and down so I can see who you are. I'm not jumping. That's better. What's your name? Godfrey. Are you someone I know? We met last night at the Waldorf Ritz. Oh, yes. You were at Mrs. Maxton's party at the bar. Or well, were you? I'm the forgotten man. So many people have such bad memories. That's so true. Why do they keep playing that same tune over and over again? Why do they? Didn't you hear it? Oh, uh, yes, yes, I do, in a way. Uh, Always the same tune, over and over again. May I? Uh, May you what? Where are you? What's that? Pixie remover. Oh, and you see them, too. They're old friends. Yes, but you mustn't step on them. I don't like them. But I don't like to see them stepped on. Oh, I'll be very careful. Uh, I wouldn't hurt them for the world. What am I supposed to do with this? Drink it, and they'll go away very quickly. Very, very quickly. You must never be rough with them. You must always send them away quietly. Is that better? Yes, you're a great help. Go away, little man, go away. Shh, 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 shh. Oh, but, oh, you haven't told me who you are. I'm Godfrey, the forgotten man. I'm the new butler. Are you that ugly man with the beard? The same. Oh, you've changed. I should never have known you. Thank you. But you're very comforting. I hope I'll see more of you. Maybe I'd better not drink any more of this. Oh, you might go away, too. <laughs> I put your hat and valise at the foot of the stairs. You can go out the front way. It's closer. I think I won the first round. You mean you're still working here? I haven't heard anything to the contrary. Well, you just got by the cub. Try the lioness. Oh, which is she? Her name's Cornelia. She's a sweet-tempered little number. Oh, yes, I met her last night. You've got a treat yes. coming. You never met her in the morning. Second door. I lost the second round. Hey, Mother God, I was going to bring you to breakfast. Opportunity never stops knocking in this house. Do you want to try again? Well, how is she in the morning? She's not as violent, but she's more insidious. Here it goes. I'll leave your things right up here so you won't forget them. Good morning. I brought you breakfast. Are you the 
Colonel Butler? Don't you remember last night? Well, well, what happened to Godfrey? I'm Godfrey. Oh, you look so different. What happened to those nice whiskers? Turn around and let me look at you. You're the cutest thing I've ever seen. Thank you. Will there be anything else? Yes, yeah, sit down and talk to me. I like to talk in the morning when your head is clear, especially if you've been somewhere the night before. Now, don't you think it would be better if I talked standing? No, because if you're uncomfortable, I'll get uncomfortable and forget what I have to say. You insist. But it doesn't seem very good form for a butler. <laughs> oh, you're more than a butler. You're the first protégé I ever had. Protégé? You know, like Carlo. Uh, who is Carlo? He's mother's protégé. Oh. You know, it's awfully nice, Carlo, having a sponsor, because then he doesn't have to work, and he gets more time for his practicing. But then he never does, and that makes a difference. Uh, yes, I imagine Do you would. play anything, Godfrey? Oh, I don't mean games and things like that. I mean the piano and things like that. Well, I... Oh, it uh, doesn't really make any difference. I just thought I'd ask. It's funny how some things make you think of other things. It's very peculiar. <laughs> it makes me feel so mature and grown up. Uh, what does? Having a protege. You're the first one I ever had. You've never had any others? No, you're the first one, and it's terribly thrilling. Not only does it occupy my mind, but I think it's character building, too. Mm -hmm. uh, just what does a protege have to do? Well, you just go on butling, and I sponsor you, don't you see? It's getting clearer. It's really not much work. It gives you something to think of, and it's going to be such fun. <laughs> so I'm sure it's going to be heaps of fun. You see, for instance, if Cornita got me or anything, you wouldn't have to do anything about it. You see, I'd take care of everything. You see, I'm your sponsor, and I just take a sock at her. <laughs> I hope that'll never be necessary. Oh, I just wanted to give you the idea. Well, that's fine, but you see, a protege has certain responsibilities also. For instance, if someone should ring for me now and I didn't answer, that would reflect upon you because you're my sponsor. Don't you see? Yes, I suppose I would. I never thought of that. You don't know how nice it is having some intelligent person to talk to. Uh, it's been very enlightening to me, too. Oh, I just thought of something else. Do you know what you are? I'm not quite sure. You're my responsibility. That's very nice. See you in church. Good morning. Fine morning, sir. Yes, it is a fine morning. Don't be in a hurry. You see, I'm the old-fashioned type, and I was also middleweight champion when I was in college. I thought you might like to know that before this thing starts. Well, you see, sir, I'm the new butler. I just served Miss Irene her breakfast. You always took a change of wardrobe when you served breakfast? Oh, well, uh, I think this young lady can explain. He really is the new butler, Mr. Bullock. I can't imagine how his things got in the hallway. Well, I still don't get it, but if you are the new butler, why didn't you say so? I'm very sorry, sir. Uh, uh, may I? There's a man at the door to see you. I think it's another process server. Another one? Yes, sir. <clears throat> well, here I am again, Mr. Bullock, with another little present. Yes, for I've heard all that before. Which one in the family is it this time? Miss Cornelia. Seems she's feeling pretty gay last night. And on her way home, she busted up a few windows along Fifth Avenue. And I'm sorry to give you that, but girls will be girls. Goodbye. Life in this family is one subpoena after oh, another. Mr. Bullock, there's a handsome cab driver waiting to see you in the kitchen. What's he want? He wants $50 and his horse. What horse? The one Miss Irene rode up the front steps last night. Where is his horse? I haven't got it. It's in the library where Miss Irene left it. Well, do you begin to get the idea? Do you like your place here? I mean, so far as you've gone? I find it very entertaining. Oh, yes, we are a very entertaining family. You really think you're going to like it here? Well, I must admit it's more desirable than living in a packing case on a city dump. 
Oh, that's where I met you, isn't it? Yes, miss. Oh, yes. Yes, I remember now. We were playing some sort of a game. A scavenger hunt, I think they called it. We needed a forgotten man. I asked you to go to the Waldorf Ritz Hotel with me, and uh, I'm a little bit hazy as to just what happened after that. I pushed you into an ash pile. Oh, yes, of course you did. It was very amusing. They were nice, clean ashes. I'm very sorry, miss. Oh, I didn't mind at all. It was very amusing. Have you a handkerchief? There's a spot on my shoe. Would you see what you can do about it? I could have you fired, you know, but I like to see things wriggle. When I get through with you, you'll go back to your packing case on the city dump and relish it. People don't make a practice of pushing Cornelia Bullock into ash piles. I'll make your life so mid. Hello, Godfrey. Good evening, Miss Irene. Oh, I like your new monkey suit. Thank you for picking it up. You know, it fits very well for a hand-me-down. Yes, I'm more or less standard, miss. How do you like my new pajamas? I think they're very nice. Thank you. I heard what you said to Godfrey. So what? So what? You leave him alone. So who's going to make me leave him alone? If you don't, you'll get a good sock from me. Oh, the physical type. What I say goes. Since when did you start falling in love with butlers? I'm not in love with him. He's, he's my protege. Oh, your protege. That's why you're picking out his suits for him. Suppose father hears about this. How long do you think Godfrey will last? Father isn't going to hear about it. You seem terribly sure of everything. If father hears about Godfrey, he's also going to hear about you and that sappy college boy. I don't know what you're talking about. But if father does hear about it, I'm likely to do a little socking myself. So little Red Riding Hood didn't have enough feminine charm to trap a wolf her own age, so she falls in love with the butler and lives happily ever after on an ash pile, if you know what I mean. I know what you mean, if you know what I mean. May I come in? You're in, aren't you? Very interesting book. The Greeks of the Middle Ages. Oh, Irene would like that. You love the Middle Ages, don't you, dear? How would you like to get together? Get to the shadow of you, play ball, you ball, you're not going to do some little black eyes, you're going to be sick as ah. My other guy. Oh, Carl, hello. Who's giving the concert tonight? The great Karolinski. Oh, he's a pianist, isn't he? No, cellist. Well, what difference does it make? It's all music, isn't it? Oh, it's so nice to see you two girls having a pleasant chat. Or is it a pleasant chat? Well, well, well. Imagine the bullocks gathered together all in one room. Oh, well, don't forget Carlo. I'm not going to forget Carlo. And don't bother about me. I feel like one of the family. Don't you go away. You don't mind if I discuss a few family matters, do you, Carlo? Oh, what? No, not at all. Oh, Alexander, now you're not going to bring up those sordid business matters again, I hope. I've just been going over last month's bills, and I find that you people have confused me with the Treasury Department. Oh, don't start that again, Dad. I don't mind giving the government 60% of what I make, but I can't do it when my family spend 50%. Well, why should the government get more money than your own family? That's what I want to know. Why should the government get more than your own flesh and blood? Well, that's just the way they have of doing things. Oh, money, money, money. The Frankenstein monster that destroys souls. Please don't say anything more about it. You're upsetting Carlo. We've got to come to an understanding right now. Either Carlo is or I am. Am what? Well, one of us has got to, and that's all there is to it. Alexander, you're inebriated. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, who would know what they're talking about living with a bunch like this? There's one thing I do know. What this family needs is discipline. I've been a pretty patient man, but when people start riding horses up their front steps and parking them in the library, that's going a little bit too far. Horses? Are you insinuating that I rode a horse up the front steps last night? Maybe that wasn't a horse I saw in the library this morning. Well, I'm positive I didn't ride a horse into the library because I didn't have my riding costume on. It was Irene who rode the horse up the front steps. What horse? Don't play innocent. I begged you not to do it. I didn't ride a horse, but if I did ride a horse, who broke those windows on Fifth Avenue? What window? You know what windows. And how about that college sap? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't care who broke the horse or rode the windows up the steps or yah, yah, yah. But this family's got to settle down. Oh. Will you stop bellowing? Look what you're doing to Carlo. Hang Carlo. Oh. You've exhausted my patience. Did you make these, Godfrey? I helped. Oh, they must be wonderful. I'd like to help sometime if you'll let me. I feel honored. 
You might as well face the situation. I have lost a lot of money lately. You have? Yes, I have. Well, maybe you left it in your other suit. Well, if things keep on like they're going now, it won't be long till I won't have another suit. Which ones are poisoned? Thank you. While we're on the subject, how about this business of certain people picking up anybody they find on the city dump and dragging them into the house? For all we know, we might all be stabbed in the back some night and robbed. Who's going to stab who? Well, we don't know a thing about certain people. Someone should speak to Irene about her habit of picking up strays. What's a stray? Will you shut up. Me? No, Cornelia. I will not shut up. My life is precious to me. It won't be in a minute. Now, now, children. Come, Carlo, come and get some nice hors d'oeuvre. I think we should get our help from employment agencies. Well, I don't know, but what I agree with Cornelia. Whatever are you all talking about? <laughs> you upset Carlo, and now you're upsetting Irene. Don't you remember her breakdown last summer? I certainly do. That's why I'm not paying any attention to this. Well, Mother can sponsor Carlo. Why can't I sponsor Godfrey? Godfrey knows I'm not being personal, but uh, after all, none of us would like to wake up some morning stabbed to death. You must come between Irene and Godfrey. He's the first thing she's shown any affection for since her Pomeranian died last summer. <laughs> Now, now, Irene, you mustn't have a spell. Here, Carlo, quick, quick, give me a, a sofa cushion here. Come, darling, lift up your head now, like a good girl. Lift up your head and let me... There, now, darling, don't cry. Now, now, darling. She's not having a spell. That's old stuff. So what is all this nonsense? Will you be quiet? You never did understand women. Why don't you get a doctor? I don't want a doctor. Do you want an ice bag? No, I don't want an ice bag. I want a dog. No, no, you mustn't do that. She makes me ill. Let's get out of here. Carlo, do the gorilla for Irene. It always amuses her. Not in the mood. Well, stop eating the hors d'oeuvre and get in the mood. Here. All right. I'll do it. My heart won't be in it. Irene, be a good girl and sit up and look at Carlo. You know, it always amuses you. Come on, quick. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Come on, Carlo, quickly. Look, Irene, look at Carlo. Isn't that lovely? Oh, isn't that clever, Irene? Look. <laughs> Carlo, come down there. She can see you better. imitating a gorilla and imitate a man. You wouldn't know an artist if one came up and bit you. This family doesn't need any stimulant. I'll be in my room. You can repeat this order in 30 minutes. Someday I'm going gorilla hunting and I won't miss. <laughs> Has Cornelia gone? Yes, darling, she's gone. Where's Godfrey? He's right here. Don't go away, Godfrey. We'll be late for the concert. Well, get my things. I'll be right with you. Godfrey's right here, darling. Godfrey, come over here so Irene can look at you. Here's Godfrey, darling. Where? Right here, look. Say hello to Irene so she'll know who you are. Hello. Oh, hello, Godfrey. And he's promised to stay on, haven't you, Godfrey? If I'm wanted? Of course you're wanted, isn't he, Irene? Yes, go away. Yes, darling, I'm going. Take good care of her. Yes, Carlo, I'm coming. Goodbye, darling, goodbye. I beg your pardon. I'm sorry, but I didn't quite hear. I said I'm not really having a spell. Hey, Cook, you'd better put this back on the fire. Looks like we've lost most of our customers. Well, what's the matter, Hanson? Did something frighten you? What kind of family am I up against? Well, there's some things even I can't answer. Do they 
go on this way all the time? Oh, no. This is just a quiet evening. Quiet evening? If I were you, I'd get rid of that lip rouge. It makes you look a little like Cupid. you find Godfrey in his room. How did you know I wanted to see Godfrey? I don't know. It just came over me. Oh, you, you, you can't come in here. Oh, why not? It's our house, isn't it? After all, one room is just like any other room. Oh, besides, I want to talk. I'm terribly sorry, but we, we can't talk here. Well, don't you think it's rather indecent of you to order me out after you kiss me? After I kiss you, did you say? Isn't it funny? This morning you were sitting on my bed, now I'm sitting on yours. Uh, we'll overlook that startling coincidence. Uh, uh, will you settle here? The please? bed's very comfortable. If it isn't, I'll get you another. Uh, we'll have our talk here. Now that I'm your sponsor, if you want a new bed, you can have it. Uh, the bed's very comfortable, thank you. Much more so than I am at the moment. Oh, any time you're uncomfortable, you just let me know. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, hasn't anyone ever told you about a certain proprieties? You use such lovely big words. I like big words. What does it mean? Well, I'll try to simplify it. Hasn't your mother or anyone ever explained to you that some things are proper and some things are not? No, she hasn't. She rambles on quite a bit, but then she never says anything. Hmm. Well, you want me to remain on here as butler, don't you? Oh, of course. And I want to justify your faith in me by being a very good butler. And in time, perhaps filling the void created by the death of your late lamented Pomeranian. Oh, I've forgotten all about him. He had fleas anyway. Besides, you're different. You use big words and you're much cuter. Mm. May I tell you a story? I'd love it. Once there was a very sentimental little girl with a very kind heart. And she helped a man who was very grateful. Then she became a nuisance and undid all the fine work she had done. Is there someone you know? Her name is Irene Bullock. And if she were a smart little girl, She'd pick out some nice young chap on her own social set and marry him and live happily ever after. And never, never, never enter the butler's room again. You mean I never can come in here again? Never. Well, when can we talk? When I'm serving breakfast in the morning, I can say good morning, Miss Irene, and you can say good morning, Godfrey. But you must never come into my room again. Oh, you'll be sorry. I'm only trying to be helpful. You'll be mean. I'll do something you wish. You'll be sorry. You'll be sorry. Oh, That's a very pretty tune, Carlo. What's the name of it? Oh, oh, oh that's the name, too. I thought it was just the words. I like it because the words are all the same. It makes it so easy to remember. That's probably why the Star Spangled Banner is so confusing. Nobody seems to know the words. <laughs> Except perhaps Godfrey. He seems to know everything. Do you know the words, Godfrey? The words? Yes, yes, the Star Spangled Banner. Nobody seems to know the words. Do you know them, Godfrey? I suppose I know as many as the average person. I feel ashamed of myself. I should know them all, of course, because after all, my ancestors came over on a boat. Oh, not the Mayflower, but the boat after that. What did your ancestors come over on, Godfrey? As far as I know, they've always been here. They weren't Indians, I hope. One can never be sure of one's ancestors. These you know, you have rather high cheekbones. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, these flowers came for Miss Irene. Where shall I put them? Well, well, ask her. There she is now. Yes, ma'am. Carlo, did you notice his cheekbones? These flowers just came for you, miss. Where shall I put them? What difference does it make where one puts flowers when one's heart is breaking? Yes, miss. Shall I put them on the piano? Life is but an empty bubble. You don't sound very cheerful for a girl who's giving a tea party. Why should anyone be cheerful? Oh, is Irene giving a tea party? You're not invited. I'll invite myself. Let's stick around, George. Sure, why not? All I have to say is some people will be sorry someday. Well, naturally, everybody will be sorry someday. For what? Some people will know for what, and then it'll be too late. This conversation is very confusing. Now, now, Irene, you mustn't confuse Carlo. He's practicing. <laughs> Do you know any good funeral music, Carlo? Shut up. Are you acting for anybody in particular? Godfrey might be interested if he'd only turn around and look. Oh, I remember that pose so well. I learned it in dramatic school. It's number eight, isn't it? Yeah, that's number eight, all right. 
Am I spoiling your act, dear? I'll spoil something of yours someday, and it won't be your act. <clears throat> Do you suppose Miss Irene would like sandwiches served in here, or shall I create a sort of buffet? Where do you want the sandwiches served, Irene? What is food? Something you eat, silly. Do you want the sandwiches served in here, or don't you? What difference does it make? Some people do just as they like with other people's lives, and it doesn't seem to make any difference. What did I call? Five hearts. Oh, was it hearts? I meant spades. I can't change, can I? You know, that music has me so confused. Carlo, please. <laughs> hey, Irene. Why the shroud? Listen, Van Rumpel, just because some people have a million dollars doesn't mean they can put their arms around other people. Brr. Where's the bar? Don't take her seriously, Charlie. The servant problem has been bothering her lately. No, thank you. I'm not hungry. No, thank you. Four o'clock. Oh, just a minute, Godfrey. Uh, bye. Hello, everybody. Hello, Tommy. Hello. Oh, it's Tommy Gray. Hello there. How are you? Hello. What's the matter with you, Godfrey? Are you ill? Come oh, along, Tommy, and give Angelica a hug. How's everything in Boston? All the beans and things. <laughs> we are rounding him up and putting him in cans as rapidly as possible. Hello, Toots. How are you, darling? What does it matter how I am? The whole thing is only a delusion. What things? You wouldn't understand. Well, I don't so far. I'm famished. How about something to eat? Oh, Godfrey, Godfrey, bring Mr. Gray a sandwich. Your place. Well, come around here. Mr. Gray's not an acrobat. Let us come over you. You're beginning to act like the rest of the family. Hey, wait a minute. What's the trouble? Godfrey Park, you old mug. Oh, do you know Godfrey? Know him? We went to Harvard together. I'm afraid you've confused me with someone else, sir. I'm Smith. Remember? <laughs> sure you're Smith. But we did go to college together. Or did we? Imagine a butler with a college education. He's not really the butler. And a very good one. You mean this is not a gag just for my benefit? Well, Mr. Gray neglected to tell you that when we were in Harvard together, I was his valet. Was he a good servant, Tommy? Excellent. What's the idea? I'll tell you later. And Mr. Gray never complained. When? No, I have very few complaints about Godfrey's work. I'll tell you tomorrow. That's one day off. Strange you never gave Mr. Gray as a reference. You see, I left Mr. Gray under very unusual circumstances. What circumstances? I'd rather Mr. Gray told you about that. Well, don't go away. Come here. Come here and tell us all about it. You know, Tommy, Godfrey's a very mysterious person. Nobody seems to know anything about him. Don't go away, Godfrey. No, no, don't go away, Godfrey. Uh, you see, I, I didn't want to say anything about this. Uh, but you see, Godfrey had been working for us as a butler and, and, and whatnot, and, and things have been going along very well when, when all of a sudden it happened. Just like that. You're sure you want me to tell all this, Godfrey? Well, you see, uh, as I said, he'd been working for us for some time when one day he came to me and said, Mr. Gray, he said, I trust my work has always been satisfactory, he said. And I said, why, of course. I, I said, I, I've never had more satisfactory work in, in all my life. And he said, thank you, Mr. Gray. He was always a very courteous man, Godfrey. Godfrey is still extremely courteous, especially in the morning. Well, it's not much of a story, really. Maybe we'd better skip it. Oh, come on, Tommy, and finish it. You can't stop in the middle. Well, let me see. Where was I? Oh, you were telling us how very polite Godfrey was. Yes, and that's where I said that Godfrey was still very polite. Well, thank you, Mrs. Bullock. It's a pleasure to have you say so publicly. That's my nature, Godfrey. I never say anything behind your back that I won't say in public. Now, that's what I admire about you, Angelica. Well, that's nice of you, Tommy. What about the story? Well, anyhow, Godfrey came to me and said, I trust my work has been satisfactory, sir. That was about the gist of it, wasn't it, Godfrey? And those may not have been my exact words, sir, but that was about the gist of it. All right, we'll settle for that. You said he was very satisfactory, and then he said thank you, and then what? Naturally, I had to take an attitude. You don't make sense. What kind of an attitude? Well, the only kind I could take toward a faithful servant. But Godfrey decided in favor of his wife and five children. Five children? Five. 
My, my. Was his wife an Indian woman? I believe she was rather dark. We used to take her on hunting trips as talk for game. Godfrey, why didn't you tell me you had five children? Well, why shouldn't Godfrey have five children? If a woman in Canada can have five children, why can't Godfrey? <laughs> oh, you see? <laughs> I owe the creation of my family to Mr. Gray's generosity. Well, if other people can have five children, so can other people. Personally, I think two are plenty. And strangely enough, Bullock agrees with me. <laughs> Listen, everybody, I, I want to make an announcement about something. Come here. Go ahead. Come what are you going to announce? I want to announce my, my, my engagement. I'm going to be married. You're going no, to be married? I'm kidding. Yeah. Well, you'll find out soon enough. Yeah. Not Charlie Van Ruppel. Yes, Charlie Van Ruppel. Where is he? Oh, he's down at the bar. Oh, 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 I've had my arm around there plenty of times before, but this is the first time I ever felt that chill since I'm a breeze. Congratulations, old boy. Congratulations about what? Your engagement, you slug. What engagement? Why, you're engaged to Irene, aren't you? Am I? Oh, Don't come on. Go on. Go on. I hear we're engaged. You said it. Well, when did it happen? Just now. <laughs> What's all the excitement? What did she say? I think she's gone and got herself engaged or something. Oh, has she again? It must be that nice boy in the brown suit. Let's go and congratulate them. This is thrilling. You're a lucky boy. I know I am. I'm not Van Rumpel. Oh, you're not? Well, which one is he? There he is. Oh, you'll pardon me, I hope. You're Van Rumpel, aren't you? Oh, oh, yes. Oh, you'll take good care of her. I imagine so. My mind's a little cloudy. I, I don't even remember proposing. You're always proposing. <laughs> oh, oh, which one did you take me up on? All of them. <laughs> How do you think Godfrey will feel about your engagement? What has Godfrey got to do with it? I wonder. Oh, you mind your own business. All right, Godfrey, let's have those. Come on, everybody. All aboard Aren't you going to congratulate Irene Godfrey? She just got herself engaged. Oh, I'd be very happy to. Godfrey, come congratulate Irene. May I congratulate you, Miss Irene? I wish you all the happiness in the world. Just leave her alone. She'll be all right in a minute. Is she mad at me? Of course not. She's not mad at anybody. Don't you know women always cry at their own engagements and other people's weddings? Why? I don't know why, but they just do. <laughs> Irene is so peculiar. She shouts when she wins and cries when she's happy. Oh, Alexander, you missed all the excitement. What's going on? Oh, let me see. I knew what it was I wanted to say, but somehow it slipped my mind. What's the matter with Irene? Oh, yes, that's it. Irene's got herself engaged. To whom? I don't know. Van something or other. I think he's that boy with his arm around that girl in pink. He's got lots of money. Well, he'll need it. Godfrey, let you and I have a good cry. How about lunch by hotel tomorrow? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, do you prefer soda or ginger ale? Uh, both. Twelve o'clock? Very good, sir. If you make up your mind just who she's going to marry, I'd like to meet the guy. I don't know, Alexander. It's one of those boys in there. Come along now. You're not eating well this morning, sir. You notice everything. Business trouble, sir? What made you ask that? Oh, well, sir, uh, butlers can't help picking up scraps of news, shall we say? We shan't say anything about it. I thought I might be of some help, sir. I dabbled in the market at one time. Well, one dabbler in the family is quite enough. Very good, sir. The eggs? No, thank you. Godfrey, you seem to be a pretty good sort. Have you noticed anything queer about me lately? Nothing particularly, sir. I sometimes wonder whether my whole family's gone mad or whether it's me. I know just how you feel, sir. I've felt that way many times since I've been here. Then why do you stay here? I have to. You don't. It's much more comfortable than living in a packing box on a city dump, sir. Besides, I'm rather proud of my job here. You're proud of being a butler? I'm proud of being a good butler, sir. And I may add, sir, a butler has to be good to hold his job here. Say, who are you? I'm just a nobody, sir. Uh, coffee. Godfrey, here I am. So you've turned up at last, eh? I began to think you'd fallen down the kitchen sink. Sorry I'm late, Tommy. It's hard to make beds when they're full of people. Waiter, you seem to do everything except put out the cat. I suppose I do that too, only we have no cat. <laughs> the same for me. What would you have, Jarvis, my man? Make it a rousing old lemonade. Yes, lemonade, you sure you can handle it? 
Oh, yes, I'm the type who can take it or leave it alone. You see, uh, now that I'm a working man, I have to keep my wits about me. I'm beginning to wonder if you've got any left at all. But don't avoid the issue. I've been sitting here like a snoopy old maid with her ears flapping in the breeze, waiting to hear the dirt. What dirt would you like to hear? Well, when I wander into a Fifth Avenue asylum and see one of the park parks of Boston serving hors d'oeuvres, I think I'm entitled to a pardonable curiosity. Why well, tell you something that you won't understand? Tommy, you've fallen off so many polo ponies that your brains are scrambled. But I still want to know why you're buttling when your family's telling everybody that you're in South America doing something about rubber or sheep or something. Family has to say something to save its face. You know, the parks disgrace very easily. I'd like to see their faces when they find out that you're a butler. They're not going to find it out. All right, they're not going to find it out. But uh, come to the point. Well, there isn't much of a point. You remember that little incident up in Boston? You still have that woman on your mind? No, not anymore. But I was pretty bitter at the time. So I gave her everything I had and just disappeared. You know, the Parks were never educated to face life. We've been puppets for 10 generations. And? Tommy, it's surprising how fast you can go downhill when you begin to feel sorry for yourself. And boy, did I feel sorry for myself. I wandered down to the East River one night thinking I'd just slide in and get it over with. But I met some fellows living there on a city dump. Here were people who were fighting it out and not complaining. I never got as far as the river. Will you do me a big favor? Who do you want killed? I'll do my own killing. Go around the corner and telephone this place and ask for Tommy Gray. When you get him on the wire, keep him there. What's this all about? Don't ask too many questions. OK. And so out of the ruins of Godfrey Park, a new edifice has sprung up in the form of Godfrey Smith. And I may add, the edifice is going to keep on springing. You intend to remain a butler? No, I have some other ideas in mind. You wouldn't understand those either, so we won't go into that. Will you do me a favor? Maybe. I have a friend in town, a very eminent brain specialist. I'd like him to examine you. I'll submit to an examination. If you will also. That's a bet. <laughs> Are you Mr. Gray? Yes. Yeah. You're wanted on the phone. On the phone? What the? Back in a minute, Cosby. The mystery solved. The mystery? Yes, now I know what a butler does on his day off. When you worked for Mr. Gray, were the two of you always this chummy? You see, I worked for Mr. Gray a long time, and uh, we got to be... Uh... Yes, that was under the name of Smith, wasn't it? Or did I hear him mention the name of Park? Uh, he may have said that we uh, used to take long walks in the park, sort of custom. Oh, yes, I see. Well, if you can be so chummy with the Grays, why can't you be chummy with the Bullocks? Oh, I try to keep my place. Why, you're very attractive, you know. As a butler? No, as a smith. You're a rotten butler. Sorry? Are we going to be friends? I rather feel that on my day off, I should have the privilege of choosing my friends. You can't go on like this forever. You really like me, and you're afraid to admit it, aren't you? Do you want me to tell you what I really think of you? Please do. As smith or as a butler? Choose your own weapon. You won't hold it against me. It's your day off. Very well. You belong to that unfortunate category that I would call the Park Avenue brat. A spoiled child who has grown up in ease and luxury, who has always had her own way, and whose misdirected energies are so childish that they hardly deserve the comment even of a butler on his off Thursday. Thank you for a very lovely portrait. Hiya, Cornelia. What are you doing here? Godfrey and I were discussing tomorrow's menu. Well, don't run away. I'm in an awfully big hurry. Goodbye now. I'll see you down by the ash pile. What did she mean by that? Well, that's a little joke we have between us. Oh, I see, a joking butler. What's the matter with that stuff? Did it turn your stomach? I think I'll switch. I'm more at mood. And now we're getting someplace. Waiter! Another one of these. He's not back yet, is he? Not yet. Would you mind putting these flowers in his room? I can't go in there anymore. I can't either. You won't tell him they're for me, will you? If you don't want me to. Oh, I don't want him to know. It's his, isn't it? Do you always sew his buttons on? Sometimes. Oh, I'd like to sew his buttons on sometime when they come off. 
I wouldn't mind at all. He doesn't lose very many. Oh, he's very tidy. Yes, yeah. he's very tidy. What does he do on his day off? He never tells me. Oh, he's probably sitting somewhere with some woman on his lap. He's the meanest man I know. I think he's very mean. I suppose he's sitting somewhere with somebody on his lap who doesn't care for him at all. As far as I know, maybe his children are there too, calling him. Calling him. Oh, I can't bear it. Please don't. You too? Oh, Molly, I know exactly how you feel. <laughs> How about a quartet? <laughs> yeah. For tomorrow may bring sorrow, so tonight let us be gay. Tell the story. Cut it, she said, and pointed toward the land. This mounting wave will roll ashore soon. In the afternoon, they came into a land in which it seemed always afternoon. Carlo! All around the coast, the languid air did swoon. What's the matter, darling? Nothing. She's been out in the kitchen eating onions. I love onions. They make me sleepy. Yes, Irene loves onions. When she was a little girl, she was always stealing onions from the icebox. You know, sometimes I wonder if my children are all there. And like a downward smoke, the slender stream along the cliff to fall and pause and fall to the sea. I thought I told you to send that grey satin evening dress to the cleaner. Grey satin? Why can't you do as you're told? It's a pleasure. Somebody's been murdered or something. Imagine a man drowning his wife in the bathtub. Maybe it's the only way he could get her to take a bath. Well, if anyone ever drowned my beautiful devil in a bad, bad tub, his mama would be very, very cautious. She would. So will there be anything else, madam? Well, I haven't asked for anything, so I don't see how I could want anything else. <laughs> I beg your pardon. I thought you were Miss Cornelia. You thought I was Cornelia? Uh, I hope you'll forgive me, madam, but... You seem to be looking younger every day, if I may say so. You certainly may. Thank you very much, Godfrey. Did you send Godfrey upstairs for anything? Did I? No, I'm quite sure I didn't. Why? I just wondered. I was in the Kerry bar today. That place is getting all run down. They're catering to a very low class of people. Well, okay. you shouldn't go in there, my dear. Darling, what's the matter? You're not eating anything. Nobody cares if I starve myself to death. What's the matter with you, Irene? I don't mind dying if other people don't. <laughs> She's in love, haven't you heard? It's probably her engagement. You know, several of my girlfriends acted just like that. It has something to do with your chemistry. <laughs> Maybe her stomach is upset. Nobody asked you. There go 
those are prophets. I beg your pardon. I don't know what's the matter with Godfrey. He's been acting so peculiar lately. But he did pay me a nice compliment. <laughs> He's always paying other people compliments. Darling, why don't you eat something? Look at Carlo. He's had two helpings of everything. Leave her alone. Carlo's eating enough for both of them. Now, Alexander. He ought to be strong enough pretty soon to give that concert. You can't rush genius. We could give a bang-up concert right now with a knife and fork. <laughs> why do you always pick on Carlo? Why not find someone else for a change? Wait a minute, Mother. Come here, Dad. Something terrible has happened. What is it? What's happened? You frightened me. You're as white as a sheet. Let's go into the living room where we won't be overheard. Cornelia, whatever's come over you, what is it? Are you ill? Come, come, sit down here and let me get you an aspirin or something. I'm all right. What is it? What's troubling you? Do you remember the pearl necklace I got for my birthday last year? Why, well, yes. What about it? It's disappeared. Maybe somebody stole it. Will you fill your gob full of chicken and keep out of this discussion? I was only trying to help. We don't need your help. When did you find out about this? I put it on my dressing table this afternoon. I went upstairs just now and it was gone. My mind, it cost such a lot of money. I'll say it did. Well, what are we going to do? I'll go call the police. Never mind, Dad. I've already called them. Oh. Mm-hmm. Well, what I want to know is, when did you miss the pearls? During dinner, I went to my room and they were gone. She probably lost them. She's always leaving them around. Nobody asked you anything, lady. If you're going to be rude to my daughter, you might at least take your hat off. When we're on criminal cases, lady, we keep both hands free. Do you mean to imply that I'm a criminal? All I know is that it's an inside job. Who's that? It's Mother's protege. No wisecracks. Is that your son? That? Say, listen, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life, but I'll be hanged if I'll plead guilty to that. Stop picking on Carlo. He wouldn't have time to steal anything. He's always too busy eating. Who are you? Guess. Where's Godfrey? He isn't feeling very well. Who are you staring at? Just a minute, sister. If I thought that were true, I'd disown my parents. <laughs> So you got a passion for jewelry, huh? Yes, I got a passion for socking cops. Where are they? Most of them are in cemeteries. Where's the necklace? Maybe I swallowed it. You mustn't accuse Molly. She's been with us for a long time. Well, that in itself is some recommendation. Thank you, Molly. You're welcome. If you don't mind, Flatfoot, I'll turn down the bed. Who is this Godfrey? He's the best butler we ever had. Oh, I'm sure Godfrey didn't take them, although we don't know much about him. Godfrey wouldn't touch those old pros of yours with a fork. Just a minute. What do you mean you don't know much about him? Well, you see, we didn't get him from an employment agency. My sister found him on a city dump. Oh, I see. Are you accusing Godfrey? I'm not accusing anyone. I only want my necklace. Oh, it's so silly to think of Godfrey wearing a pearl necklace. <laughs> Where is this butler? He's probably in his room. Where's that? It's back this way. <gasps> That's his room over there. Oh, Godfrey, you got him behind him. Here comes the cops. Look hey, out, hey, Godfrey. Look out. Here they come. Is this? All right, lady. Come in. Where are they? Where? That's what I said, where? Where, oh, where is my little dog gone? Come on, snap oh, out of it. I suppose you notice he's been drinking. He has not been drinking. Well, I don't blame him if he has. This family's probably got to him, too. Do you mind if we search your room, Godfrey? Somebody lost? There seems to be a pearl necklace missing. Do you know anything about it? Oh, let's look for it. Too bad. It's too bad for you. I wouldn't be so cocksure of everything. This is a serious matter. Well, the pearls couldn't just get up and walk away. She probably threw them out of the taxi like she did last summer. Just look under the rug. Maybe that's where I put it. We'll do the searching, Godfrey, old boy. It's a pleasure. Oh, this is all very silly. I can imagine a woman stealing pearls, but what would Godfrey do with them? Look under the mattress. Yes, yeah, there's a, a dandy place. Well, they're not here. They must be there. Just a minute, lady. What makes you so sure they ought to be under the mattress? Why, I, I read that that's where people put things when they steal them. Oh, yeah? Say, what are you up to? I'd like to talk to you boys outside for just a minute, if you don't mind. I'm terribly sorry, Godfrey. You see, I told you so. We're all terribly sorry, Godfrey. Come, Cornelia. Yeah, 
ja, ja, ja. I'm terribly sorry, boys. I want to apologize for my family. They're all slightly hysterical. Yeah, we sort of got an idea what you're up against. Well, now I'd like to let the whole matter drop. She probably mislaid her necklace. As a matter of fact, I'm not certain that she ever had one. There's something phony about the whole thing. That's all a mistake. And if you don't mind, I'd like to send a little check around tomorrow to the pension fund. Okay, Mr. Bullock. Thanks very much. Good night. Good night. The whole thing's forgotten. Good night, boys. Now, just what have you got to say for yourself? Aren't they going to do anything about it? No, and it's probably a good thing for you that they're not. And there's something else I want to tell you. If you don't find your necklace, the joke's on you, because it's not insured. Cornelia lost the pearls, and I've got mine. Cornelia lost the pearls, and I've got mine. Cornelia lost the pearls, and I've got mine. <laughs> Here we are, Tommy. The village of forgotten men. How do you like it? Well, I don't know but what I prefer Newport. It's a matter of choice. Unfortunately, these men have no choice. Go on. I still prefer Newport. What is that delightful aroma? Oh, that's Old Man River. You get used to it after a while. Do you mean to say that people really live in this place? Well, they go through the motions. I observe yon structure on your left. That is the birthplace of the celebrated butler, Godfrey Smith. Where are the ashes of Godfrey Perk? Scattered to the winds. Hello, Duke. Well, well. Hiya, Mike. How's oh, Strix? Meet Mr. Gray, Mr. Flaherty. Uh, Mr. Gray, for what I went for? I've been washing out my lingerie. That's okay. Hey, Bob. Look who's here. Hi, Bob. Well, bust my false teeth. Say, thanks for the beans, Duke. They got here just in time. Oh, they took them some. The beans was marvelous, thanks. We had everything but the cans. Don't thank me, thank Mr. Gray. He's got a corner on the bean market. Say, is that the same corner that Prosperity is just around? <laughs> no, that's another one. <laughs> Hello, Arthur. Hello, Duke. I meet Mr. Gray, Mr. Bellinger. You look as though you had a job, too. What is this, an epidemic? Hey, Mike, <laughs> let's get going. Well, Duke, we got to run along. This is moving day. We've got to help uh, some of the boys move their shacks. The dump trucks are crowding in on us a little. We ought to be in the river by early spring. Sure, uh -huh. we might be able to float by that time. See you again, Duke. Right. That little fellow with a bundle of wood under his arm is Bellinger, the second national. When his bank failed, he gave up everything he had so that his depositors wouldn't suffer. Not really. Really. You see, Tommy, there are two kinds of people. Those who fight the idea of being pushed into the river and the other kind. Well, after all, things have always been this way for some people. These men are not your responsibility. There are different ways of having fun. You have a peculiar sense of humor. Over here, we have some very fashionable apartment houses. Over there is a very swanky nightclub. While down here, men starve for want of a job. How does that strike your sense of humor? Well, what's all this leading to? Tommy, there's a very peculiar mental process called thinking. Uh, you wouldn't know much about that. But when I was living here, I did a lot of it. One thing I discovered was that the only difference between a derelict and a man is a job. Sit down over here and rest your weary bones. Let me tell you why I wanted to talk to you about it. Well, I'll listen, but I still think that you belong in a psychopathic ward. Well, you may be right, but let me tell you my plan. And listen with both ears. I have an idea. Did you and Irene have a good time while you were in Europe? Oh, as good a time as anyone could have with Irene. You should be more civil to Carlo. Why? Well, I don't mind, as the French say, chercher la femme. That will hold you. <laughs> Carlo always had such a clever answer for everything. Darling, would you have some coffee? No, thank you. You didn't eat any dinner, either. You had plenty. I can't say anything. You never do. Oh, darling, what's come over you? We spend good money to send you abroad to forget an engagement, and you're worse off than when you left. Her liver is probably upset. You better take a liver pill, then. I don't want a liver pill. You mustn't get so upset about a broken engagement. You've broken many before, and you've never acted this way. It isn't a broken engagement. She's upset because Godfrey didn't fall down in a faint when we got in today. 
why is she Godfrey fall in the face? He didn't make enough fuss over her homecoming to suit her. Oh, well, Godfrey's not the fussing kind. Shh. Oh, Godfrey, I was just telling my daughters that you missed them both very much while they were away. Oh, yes, I did, very much indeed. We missed you too, Godfrey, didn't we, Irene? Yes. Uh, thank you, I missed you also. Well, it's so nice for everybody to miss everybody else, because then they make it so nice when they get together again. There, there, darling. It's nice to see you cheerful. You do have a way with you, Godfrey. You really do. Thank you. You know, there's no use denying the fact that Godfrey has a way with him. Well, we must be running on. Cornelia, cheer her up like a dear. I'm a cinch. Do you feel better now that you know Godfrey missed us? He missed me more than he did you. I could tell by the light in his eyes. Why don't you throw yourself in the man's arms and get it over with? Oh, you can't rush a man like Godfrey. You're getting pretty old, you know. It's your last chance to get a husband. He's really in love with me. He's just hard to break down, that's all. I could break him down in no time at all. He wouldn't have anything to do with you. How do you know? Because he wouldn't. Don't you try anything. I'm not saying I will. And I'm not saying I won't. Come to think of it, Godfrey and I have a little unfinished business. Well, you better leave it unfinished unless you want to be wearing a lamp for a hat. <laughs> Did you mean it when you said you missed me? Oh, well, yes, of course I did. I mean, did you miss Cornelia and me, or just me? Well, I missed both of you, I guess. But... Well, not just me. Oh, I may have missed you a little more than I did Cornelia. Why? Well, I'm glad, because if you missed Cornelia more, you'd probably miss me less. Well, that sounds very logical. That's all I wanted to know. You look so cute in your apron. <laughs> I'm not trying to look cute. Molly has a cold, and I'm doubling for her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's funny about that? She hasn't got a cold. No? No, she's got the same thing I've got, only you won't let me talk about things like that, so I won't, because you lose your temper. Oh, well, not seriously. Will you let me do something if I ask you? Well, what do you want to do? Wife. Oh, all right. You can tell me all about your trip. Oh, you won't get married? Why should I? Because every place I went, everybody was Godfrey. Every... I don't want to seem dull, but uh, I do seem to have a little trouble following you at times. Well, for instance, when I go into a restaurant in Paris or any place, I'd close my eyes and I'd say, the waiter's Godfrey. And I'd say, I'm home, and he's serving me dinner. Made everything taste better. Why? Haven't you any sense? I'm afraid I haven't. And when I get in the cab, the driver was Godfrey, and I'd say, this is his chariot, and he's taking me up through the clouds to his castle on the mountains. <laughs> Suppose you come down out of the mountains and tell me about your trip. Well, we went to Venice, and one night I went for a ride in one of those robots that the man pushes with a stick. Not a matador, that was in Spain, but something like a matador. Do you by any chance mean a gondolier? That was the name of the boat, and the man that pushed it sang. It was a beautiful song. I didn't understand it, but it was beautiful. I see. So you closed your eyes, and the man was Godfrey. It was wonderful. I didn't even mind the smells. <laughs> Well, it's very convenient to take a trip abroad without leaving the kitchen. Oh, you have a wonderful sense of humor. I wish I had a sense of humor, but I never can think of the right thing to say till everybody's gone home. Uh, do you mind if I talk for a little bit while you uh, catch your breath? I'd love it. Well, while you've been away, I've been doing some things also. I've been trying to do things that I thought would make you proud of me. Oh, I was proud of you before I went away. Yes, but I mean prouder still. You see, you helped me to find myself, and I'm very grateful. You'd make a wonderful husband. <laughs> I'm afraid not. You see, I know how you feel about things. How? Well, you're grateful to me because I helped you to beat Cornelia. And I'm grateful to you because you helped me to beat life. But that doesn't mean that we have to fall in love. Well, if you don't want to, but I'd make a wonderful wife. <laughs> well, not for me, I'm afraid. See, I like you very much. I had a very bitter experience. But I won't bore you with that. Well, maybe she wasn't in love with you. Well, maybe not. However, that's beside the point. You and I are friends. And I feel a certain responsibility to you. That's why I wanted to tell you first. Tell me what? Well, I thought it was about time that I was moving on. God. Now, please. I won't cry, I promise. Well, that's fine. After all, I'm your protege. You want me to improve myself, don't you? Yes. You don't want me to go on being just a butler all my life, do you? I want you to be anything you want to be. Well, now, that's very sweet. When are you leaving? Oh, pretty soon. 
But I'll call you up every now and then, and uh, we'll have long chats. I'll tell you how I'm getting on. Oh, we'll have lots of fun. Are you going back to her? To whom? That Indian woman. Indian? Oh. <laughs> she was just a fabrication. Oh, then you weren't married to her. No, she was just a product of Tommy Gray's imagination. Then there wasn't any. No. Well, then there couldn't have been five children. <laughs> well, naturally. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a difference. <laughs> yeah, that makes a difference. <laughs> uh, did you ring, miss? You needn't be so formal when we're alone. Shouldn't that rather increase a butler's formality? But you're not a butler. I'm sorry if I'm disappointed. <laughs> you might drop that superior attitude for a moment. There's a little matter I've wanted to talk over with you for quite a while called the mystery of Milady's necklace or what happened to the pearls. Pearls? Necklace? Oh, you mean the one that disappeared last fall? The same. Uh, didn't that ever turn up? Oh, yes, it turned up, but not in my possession. I know the first part of the story, but I wondered what you might know about the second part. I can't imagine. I know another story that might interest you, too. I met some people on the boot coming over a Boston family, quite distinguished. They knew a great deal about a family called uh, the Parks. The old Mayflower crowd, very upper crust, too, mind you. Never been a breath of scandal connected with the family. It would be an awful shame to see them made the laughingstock of Boston, wouldn't it? I should hate to see anyone made a laughingstock at any place. I'll let you and I take a long taxi ride out Van Cortland Way. Perhaps we could exchange secrets. Is that a command? As you like. I'll be waiting around the corner. Uh, which corner? Uh, this one or that one? This corner. It's impossible to uh, exchange intimate secrets here. The traffic's almost as heavy as it is at the Grand Central Station. Don't forget, darling, 15 minutes. <laughs> Please, Godfrey, you can't go with Cornelia. But I didn't say I was going any place with Miss Cornelia. I know, but you will. She always gets her own way. She makes everybody do just as she likes. But why should you care whether I meet her or not? I do care. That's why it's Cornelia's the one who doesn't care. But I think I should decide those things for myself. <laughs> oh, Godfrey, I don't want to be annoyed, but I... Oh. Oh, to see here, you... You, you, you can't do that. Uh, please, snap out of it. Oh... This is the craziest family. <laughs> now, see here. Stop this nonsense. Do you hear? If you're faking one of your spells to keep me from meeting Cornelia, you're on the wrong track, you hear? Do you hear? Yeah. Some smelling salt. Are you feeling better? No? But just a minute. Godfrey knows how to take care of little Irene. Yes, indeed. Just lie there quietly, and Godfrey will take care of everything. Godfrey knows just how to take care of these nasty old faints. That's the girl. Come right up here. There you are. Godfrey will soon fix Irene. Yes, indeed. Just leave everything to Godfrey. Godfrey will take care of everything. Now, you just sit right down there like a good girl, and in just a minute, you'll forget that you had any trouble. <laughs> I thought so. Let that be a lesson to you. Godfrey! Oh, Godfrey, don't go away. Oh, Godfrey. <laughs> now I know you love me. I do not love you, and you're going to give me all wet. You do, or you wouldn't have lost your temper. What is the meaning of this, may I ask? Oh, Talking about. Godfrey, loves me. Godfrey, Godfrey, I demand an explanation. 
I think perhaps, madam, that I had better resign. Yes, I think you'd better. That's a very good idea. What do you think your father would say to all this? I don't care what anybody says. God, she loves me. See here, young lady. You take a bath and put on some dry clothes and come downstairs immediately. Come here. Oh, I never heard anything like this in my life. Shut that thing off. I feel gloomy enough as it is. Alexander, something terrible's happened. What? Godfrey pushed Irene into a cold shower. What's terrible about that? And besides, she's in love with her, or he thinks he's... I can't make head or tail out of the whole thing. I can't make head or tail out of what you're saying. The only thing to do is send him back where he came from. He never should have come here in the first place. Now, imagine falling in love with a butler. You're gonna feel oh. sorry for anyone, feel sorry for Godfrey. Alexander! Don't tell Alexander me and stop fluttering and come to rest. I've got something more important I want to talk about. Now, don't tell me you're going to talk about those sordid money matters. Oh, money, money, money. Yes, I am, but before I start, I'm going to have a little talk with Carlo. Well, what are you going to do, Alexander? This is very private. It's just for Carlo's ears. You don't mind if we have a little chat, Carlo, old boy? You know, for some time, Carlo, I felt it. <laughs> What did you say to Carlo? I said goodbye. Did he go? Yes, he left very hurriedly through the side window. Well, where's he going? I don't know, but he won't be back. Now you sit down and do some listening. I've never seen you like this before. Sit down. What's come over you, Alexander? You're just in time to sit down and do some listening. You want Godfrey to listen? Yes, I want Godfrey to listen. This concerns him, too. You might as well all know, point blank, we're about broke. You mean we haven't any money left? Well, we've got this house, a few odds and ends, and that's about all. Not only that, I've lost all of my stock in the Bullock Enterprises. And I've borrowed some of the stockholders' money trying to recoup my losses. I don't know where I'm going to end up. Maybe in jail. Alexander! But if I do end up in jail, it'll be the first piece I've had in 20 years. And I don't want any of you to chortle about Godfrey, because you may all end up on the city dump before you're through. What are we going to do? Uh, may I intrude, sir? I'm afraid things are not as bad as you make out. What do you know about it? Well, sir, I've known for a long time that the Bullock interests were in rather a bad way. I offered to help you once, but you declined that help. So I took the liberty of dabbling in the market on my own account. Here, sir. What's this? That's most of your stock. I knew it was being dumped on the market, so I sold short. I don't understand. You sold short. You mean a gentleman's underwear? Wait a minute. You mean that you've been making money while I was losing it? I did it in your interest, sir. Uh, the stock has been endorsed over to you. I don't understand. You did this for me? Well, sir, there comes a turning point in every man's life. A time when he needs help. It happened to me also. And this family helped me. I hope I repaid my debt. And I may add, some of the money went into a project of my own. I hope you won't mind, sir. Do you mean that you did all that on $150 a month? <laughs> well, hardly. You see, with the aid of Tommy Gray, I was able to transmute a certain trinket into gold, and then into stock, and then back into pearls again. Thank you, dear lady, for the use of this trinket. Oh, Godfrey, then you did steal them after all. Well, I, uh, perhaps Miss Cornelia had better explain that. You win. What is this all about, anyway? I put the pearls under Godfrey's mattress. Thank you, Miss Cornelia. I wanted you to say that. But why? You wouldn't understand, Mother. Here, Godfrey, these are rightfully yours. Oh, no, thank you. I've repaid my debt, and I'm grateful to all of you. If anyone's indebted, we are, after the way some of us have treated you. Well, I've been repaid in many ways. I learned patience from Mr. Bullock. I found Mrs. Bullock at all times, shall we say, amusing. Oh, that's very complimentary of you, Godfrey. And don't forget that you said I looked as young as Cornelia. What good did you find in me, if any? A great deal. You taught me the fallacy of false pride. You taught me humility. I don't understand you. Now, Miss Cornelia, there have been other spoiled children in the world. I happen to be one of them myself. You're a high-spirited girl. I can only hope that you use those high spirits in a more constructive way. And so, good day. You know, 
I hate to see Godfrey go. He's the only butcher we ever had who understood women. Well, Molly, you told me to leave my hat near the door, remember? I hate to see you leave, Godfrey. <laughs> oh, Molly, you've been swell. House that seemed empty. <laughs> well, I guess the best friends have to part. Will you say goodbye to Miss Irene for me? I don't think I can go through that ordeal right now. You're sweet, Molly. Goodbye. What is it? What's the matter with Cornelia? What's the matter with everybody? Mother, what's the trouble? He's gone. Who's gone? Godfrey. Where? And Carl's gone out of the window. Everybody's gone. Oh, Molly, has he gone? Oh, poor Molly. Well, he's not going to get away from me. Order the car, Molly. I'll be right down. <laughs> Hey, business looks pretty good tonight. I'll say it is. Mayor Courtney's here tonight with a big party. Well, I'll have one of the boys bring these down, Duke. Hello, Duke. Well, Bob, we can't complain about this. Complain? Why have we got the mayor with us here tonight? Yes, I heard. Big stuff. Huh? Huh? Well, this is all Greek to me. Well, here's our wandering butler now. Explain it to him. Yeah. Hello, Duke. Father. I've got an estimate from the contractor on your housing plan for the winter. Yeah. He figures he can partition off our present buildings into compartments, take care of at least 50 people. It'll cost $5,800, but that includes steam heat. Forgotten men with steam. Sounds like something that ought to be on the menu. I'll talk with you about it later, Arthur. Say, I've still got an interest in this company. When do you start paying dividends? Well, we're giving food and shelter to 50 people in the winter and giving them employment in the summer. What more do you want in the way of dividends? You're the most arbitrary butler I've ever met. Ex-butler. Fired? I quit. I uh, felt that foolish feeling coming on again. You mean Irene? What do you know about that? Well, nobody knows anything about her love except all of Upper New York and Lower Manhattan. Guess I got out just in time. Why don't you marry the girl? No, thank you. I've had enough of matrimony. Well, what's wrong with butlers? Lots of society girls run away with their chauffeurs. Never mind about that. Suppose you write me out a check for $5,000. For what? A new dock. Perhaps we'll get some of the yachting trade. Well, how about an airplane landing? Have you thought of that? We'll come to that later. city dump that was here. Well, this is it, but uh, most of it's been filled in. What happened to all those forgotten men? Forgotten men? Oh, we got most of them out in time. Oh, don't be fresh. Where's Godfrey? You mean Mr. Godfrey Smith? Yes. Well, lady, his office is right over there where it says office. Oh, just where it used to be. Oh, thank you. Come on, Claire. Say, wait a minute. What is this, a basket party? Good evening, Mr. Courtney. Good evening, Mr. Lovely evening. Yes. <laughs> Good evening. Well, there you are. Business is fine. I'm stuck, you're nuts, and I'm going back to Boston before I disgrace my family. Good riddance. Oh, Godfrey, company has come. Hello. What are you doing here? Yes, what are you doing here? Don't let him off the hook. Oh. You must leave at once, do you hear me? Well, we got rid of her in a hurry. If I can help you in any other way, be sure and let me know. Oh, my, how you fixed this place up, Godfrey. It's much nicer than when I was here before. Oh, you noticed that. Are the forgotten men having a party? It's their annual reunion. I saw the mayor out there. Is he one of them, too? He's the guest of honor. Oh, oh it's a lovely view. The bridge and everything. Is it always there? Most always. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have a kitchen. I'm going to like this place very much. Watch over here. Is this where you sleep? That's the general purpose of the room. Any observations? Oh, I think it's very cute, but we'll have to change the wallpaper. What do you mean, we'll have to change oh, the wallpaper? Oh, I don't like green wallpaper. It makes me billions. You won't have to look at it. You're going home right now. Oh, but I can't go home. Why not? 
I can't go home after what happened. What happened? You know what happened just as well as I do. Now, see here. You Oh, go on and lose your temper. I love it when you lose your temper. Why can't you let me alone? Because you're my responsibility and someone has to take care of you. I can take care of myself. You can't look me in the eye and say that. You love me and you know it. You know, there's no sense in struggling against a thing when it's got you. It's got you and that's all there is to it. It's got you. Oh, that's Clarence. I'm sorry I was delayed, Miss Irene, but I had to go all the way around the back way. Well, put the wood over there, Clarence. That's fine, yes. Hello, Godfrey. And you can put the groceries right there in the kitchen. That's fine. Thanks, Clarence. Uh, what's the idea? Well, I bought some wood and I bought some food. It should last us for a week anyway. It's funny you didn't have the foresight to bring a minister and a license. It's funny. I never thought of that. May I come in? Oh, Mr. Courtney. Uh, Mr. Gray said there are a couple of people over here who wanted to get married. Uh, are you it? Yes, we're it. Can you marry us without a license? Without a may get me into a lot of trouble, but uh, I guess I've known your family long enough to take a chance. Who are you going to marry? Godfrey. Oh, this is Godfrey. Hmm. How do you do, uh, Godfrey? How do you, uh, yeah. Does your father know about this? Oh, everybody knows about it except Godfrey. Yeah. Well, I guess we better have a witness. Huh? Oh, we can use Clarence. Clarence, you can be the witness. Come down uh -huh. here. Come right, stand right down here. That's fine, right there. Just come on, Godfrey. Right there. Yeah. Well, now, uh, uh, join hands, please. No, the right hand. Oh. Stand still, Godfrey. It'll all be over in a minute. <laughs> <laughs>